want basic A to B transportation that has good fuel economy, a great warranty, and a starting price under 17,000 bucks, well, you've come to the right place. Thanks for joining us here on Overdrive Reviews. We are talking about today the 2021 Mitsubishi Mirage G4. The G4 means it's the sedan, uh, obviously the cousin or the sister to the uh, hatchback Mirage. New for 2021, there's an impressive list of new safety features that come standard across the entire Mirage lineup. You can check my other video out here on the 2021 hatchback that I did a few months ago, uh, but I wanted to wait until one of these G4 sedans came in with these wheels. These are an option and obviously are much nicer looking uh, than the uh, standard hubcap on the base model. Um, but this is still one of the cheapest new cars you could buy in America today with an insanely good EPA fuel economy rating. And they're really, really affordable, super easy to maintain as well. Mitsubishi sells a lot of these things. So we'll give you a full tour today of the car on the outside, on the inside, take it out on the road, let you know how it drives. There's not much to report as far as what's new under the engine, uh, under the hood rather. There's not much there. It's still kind of that basic three cylinder engine um, that is kind of struggling for power. But Maybe that isn't what you're most concerned about. We'll give you a look at that. Uh, please subscribe to the channel here if you're new here to Overdrive Reviews. And uh, I think without further ado, you know how it goes. Let's get moving. So we'll start up here at the front of the car because it's the most glaring improvement over the previous generation uh, Mirage. Check out this new grille. I love it. Kind of razor edged in the front here while with the emblem in between. A nice front lip spoiler down here at the bottom. This particular LE model does have the uh, fog lights on both sides as well. Um, these are not LED. You can't get LED headlights on the Mirage. Uh, but again, keeping costs down is going to affect things like that. These are halogen. They're still relatively bright. Maybe the average driver won't notice a difference, but if if you're big on LED lights for, you know, illuminating uh, whatever you got to do, um, this maybe isn't the best bet. Uh, but I do love the grill, much improved for sure over the previous model, much more aggressive, much more sporty, and gives a more of a updated 21st century uh, look. Also notice too, every Mirage now comes standard with front crash mitigation and emergency braking with pedestrian uh, detection, and that is built right into the windshield right here on every single Mirage. Hatchback, sedan, it doesn't matter. They all have have forward collision mitigation. Definitely a thumbs up over the previous year. So the side of the car from the profile doesn't really look any different than it did before. The front and the rear are really all that's kind of different noticeably right away on the Mirage for 2021. Um, same kind of silhouette on the side, uh, basic kind of transportation. But what's really cool is that compared to the hatchback, there is three inches more leg room in the rear seat. So if you've got to haul people or stuff, um, you definitely want to go with a sedan. It's a little bit more expensive than the hatchback, but only by uh, maybe a thousand bucks, depending on what model you get. Uh, but three more inches of legroom in the back definitely makes this car much more appealing um, and I don't mind the side profile or the side look with these wheels these are 15 inch wheels here it has 175 55 R15s all the way around there are front disc brakes and rear drum brakes on every Mirage model um, I believe the base model Mirage though comes with 14 inch so believe it or not these are actually an upgrade a step up and I like these especially with the white color uh, kind of the ivory white color these rims really kind of stand out the multi-spoke rims. You got your little turn signal indicator right there as well. So like I said before, the base model Mirage hatchback is the cheapest Mirage you can get. The hatchbacks overall are more affordable and cheaper than the uh, G4 sedans are. These G4 sedans though, uh, don't let that fool you, aren't expensive either. The base model ES starts around 16435 The next model up, the LE, goes for about 18360 bucks. The Carbonite Edition, which is the new model year or new model trim for 2021, about 19,135. Now, Carbonite Edition means there's just sportier styling, and the top model uh, is uh, the SE, 19,335 bucks. Now, this uh, Mirage competes with the Kia Rio, the Hyundai Accent, the Nissan Versa, the Chevrolet Spark. Now, consistently, uh, big time review organizations like Car and Driver, Motor Trend, etc., have uh, rated all of them better in performance, and that's kind of understandable. They all have more power, so this might be one of the cheaper cars. Uh, at the end of the day, but also you're going to be getting what you pay for. Um, Mirage does have better fuel economy, but again, the other options, the other competitors 
have more power and are consistently rated higher in quality and performance. So if performance and quality are big in your book, the Mirage might not be at the top of your list. Let's go though under the hood to see what's under there. All right, so here's the beast you've been waiting for. Uh, yeah, that's sarcasm because this is just a 1.2 liter three cylinder engine. Did y'all hear me? Three. One, two, three. Three cylinder engine pumping out 78 horsepower and 74 pound feet of torque. This is the same engine the Mirage has had for a few years now. But if that's not impressive, let me tell you what will be the fuel economy. The CVT, this is what that, uh, that's what this car has right here. Combined about 37 miles per gallon, city 35, highway 41. Now the base model Mirage does come with a five-speed manual, you can upgrade to this CVT, which is what most Mirages do have. Those five speeds obviously uh, aren't as popular with drivers these days, but you can get them and they obviously are more affordable uh, than the CVT, but the same engine is, is also in that five-speed. Uh, this has a 9.2 gallon tank, which is good for a highway driving range of about 377 miles, which for a car that is, let's see, that size, that's not bad at all. Um, this thing only weighs about 2,194 pounds. So the fuel economy rocks, but what doesn't rock is the sound of this engine. Unfortunately, with a cheaper engine, you do get kind of a noisier engine. And this three cylinder is uh, definitely a little bit noisy and rickety out on the highway. When you start it up, it sounds kind of like a lawnmower almost. And like, it seems like you could probably jump it with your iPhone if you needed to start it up or something, if the battery dies. It does really well with the fuel economy, but the noise, if that's a problem for you, be aware, it's a noisy engine. Listen to this. Told you. Just like the front of the Mirage for 2021, the back has gotten a totally new look, a totally new design, which uh, again, I love. The biggest uh, notice you'll see is down here, that's kind of a, uh, an attempt at a diffuser down here at the bottom, which is just nice styling as well. I wish that uh, exhaust pipe was popped up underneath all the uh, body paneling so you couldn't see it, but that's a minor knock there. Uh, the biggest thing that you'll notice though, with the nice black stripes or the nice trim around uh, the tail lamps here uh, on both sides, obviously. You've got the Mirage G4, which is a nice emblem here, nice chrome trim in the center. Um, the backup camera, which is uh, nicely hidden underneath here, unlike the hatchback, which is like stuck onto the back of the door. I'm glad they didn't do that with the sedan as well. Um, all of the Mirages for 2021, by the way, let's go to the side. All of them, sedans and hatchbacks, have this spoiler, which is really nice. Uh, no matter which ones you get with the nice wheels, the ugly wheels, whatever one, all have a spoiler. A nice touch for the new model here. And this one, as I said before, is the limited edition uh, G4, which means it's got some upgraded stuff on it. Much more sporty, edgy, and uh, aggressive, which I think is what Mitsubishi was trying to do. Let's talk cargo since, uh, you know, everyone likes a trunk, right? This is surprisingly large for a car of this size. It doesn't look all that big, but it's 13 cubic feet of total space, which whenever you're, you know, packing just several suitcases in, it actually looks like it might fit. Excuse my shadow there. Um, but there are nice deep sides over here. Let me get the shadow out of the way. Um, there's nice spaces to kind of put something that's maybe oblong or oddly shaped. You do have a floor mat here with uh, items underneath. You've got a small spare tire, but a nice deep well to put, you know, oil, to put some stuff for, you know, removing snow, that kind of stuff. I always store uh, random tools down in my wheel wells and my cars. Um, so an actually large trunk uh, compared to the car size, but over Overall, um, it actually is smaller than competitors. The Accent has a, I believe, a 14 cubic foot uh, cargo space, while the Versa has a 15. So a little bit smaller than competitors, but overall, a nice uh, place to put your bags. And guess what? There's also a pass-through into the compartment up front in case you get a long ski or something fun. Uh, one more thing here at the rear that I want to talk about detail-wise, you do have LED lights here on the rear tail lamps on both sides for the red parts, um, which is great. I just wish there were LED lights up front. There's also an LED uh, third brake light in the center here. Um, but speaking of details and things, I'm a detail guy. I love when details are really kind of uh, paid attention to. This kind of stuff with this wiring right here follows the little arm. 
it's just it just screams cheap and again i know it's a cheaper car but at the end of the day how much more could it be to cover this up and make it look a little more presentable and um, also some more padding on the roof or on the back side of the trunk lid here would probably make the drive and the ride a lot quieter all right let's head inside the uh, mirage here let's get in the back first it's actually a pretty spacious uh, place to be when there's just two of you i'm six two so if there's three six two adults in the back might be a little tight but let's talk some numbers real quick I told you at the beginning of the video that this Mirage has three inches more rear leg room than the hatchback, and that is so very true. The rear leg room in this uh, Mirage G4 is 37.3 inches, three more than the hatchback. The rear headroom is 36.8, the front headroom 38.9, the front leg room 41.7. So all around a much bigger place if you've got long legs. Um, but let's talk about the seats themselves. The seats are actually all cloth, obviously, as you can see, but they're really kind of comfortable. They're squishy, but not so much that you kind of sink into the seat, which is really great. Um, sometimes the more affordable, cheaper cars can have really kind of chintzy seats. These don't feel chintzy at all. They feel really nice and supportive um, on a longer drive. And look down here. The hump, the middle part, isn't really that big at all. Some cars, it's way up here and you kind of lose that middle seat. Um, but not bad at all. That middle hump would not get in the way of someone who's a little bit shorter or a child or whatever. Uh, as I mentioned in the trunk, Here's your pass-through right here. You do have two cup holders, which are pretty standard. And here is the pass-through. It's just a big plastic piece that kind of folds right down. That's obviously a good option if you're hauling lumber or you know skis. This maybe isn't the car to haul lumber, but at the end of the day, if you need to, you got the option, right? That tucks right back up in there. Um, there are no grab bars up here on either side. There's no interior light anywhere up there. It looks empty because it is. Um, so there's no lighting in the back, uh, but you do have, obviously, let me close the door here. Eh, an okay sound a little bit um, loud a little bit more rickety than I'd like but um, you do have uh, obviously window controls here on the side along with uh, obviously the handle to get out um, the doors feel okay there are a lot of black plastic which you know is expected in a car of this price range you kind of know what you're getting when you get one of these cars and it feels exactly like you would expect there are small map pockets back here look at this they're not very deep at all. They're kind of small and really low to the ground. You do have a small cup holder right there with my Burger King cup in it already. Um, no air controls back here, no charging controls or charging outlets or anything. A uh, very basic back seat that will do the job if that's all you want. All right, so we're up front now. Door check again. Again, a little bit loud, but we'll look past it, right? Um, I told you before about some new standard equipment that comes on the 2021 Mirage. Let's get to that right now. Inside here is where that really kind of shines. Standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto across every Mirage trim that you could ever get, as, uh, as well as automatic climate control, which is a great option. That's usually in the past had to be something you paid more for. It now comes standard on the Mirages. You can also upgrade to auto high beams and lane departure warning that's available on the SE model. So that's where you have to go to get that is the SE model. Um, but this interior here, um, it, kind of plain Jane and basic, nothing super fancy, um, but also it has everything you kind of need. This particular car doesn't have heated seats and the upgraded stitching on the seats, but it has everything else. Let's dive into all of that. So let's start her up. You do have a key in this one. Um, which there are options obviously for a remote start or a, a keyless start and the button actually goes right here It's kind of like a Porsche it, uh, the ignition is on the left side uh, If you do have the push button start, let's move my seat back so I can film better um, This is a standard seven inch screen here very responsive um, Very simple to use. There's nothing crazy about this layout or crazy about the system. You've got all your basic stuff You got home phone return back night day uh, as far as brightness goes um, really easy to use nothing super fancy in there you can't you know change the ambient lighting because there isn't ambient lighting um, but I do love the glossy black trim around this uh, center dash here you got your uh, little uh, vents as well the automatic climate control as I mentioned before um, let's look at the screen and get the glare off of there real quick for you but watch this the backup camera is actually really clear 
Look at that. I mean, it's super bright today, but look how clear that is. For a, you know, a $19,000 car that starts around 164, uh this isn't bad at all. Super nice detail. Um there isn't projection as far as whenever you turn the wheel, like you know, the center uh green lines don't turn with you. Uh but that's not the end of the world, but a nice backup camera for sure. Obviously, every car has one. Um let's move down here. You do have a USB. That's all you have in this car. It's just one USB. There also are usually uh heated seat buttons right here. You got your two cup holders. You've also got um your standard uh, you know, CVT transmission right here, low. You do have a D and a DS. A DS obviously is for sport over here, and the car uh, does change right there to DS or D depending on what mode you are in. Let's get back over here. Um, let's put this back in park before I make the car move, right? Um, the dash, uh, kind of that cheaper black plastic you would, ex uh, you would expect. Um, Definitely be careful if you've got like oily fingers or lotion on or something like that because you could leave streaks really easy. You can kind of see it there drying up. Uh, you, can, you can leave marks kind of easy. And like right here, you got some water coming in from it rained the other day. Even on similar subcompact affordable cars, uh, the interior on this needs to be updated. Uh, and one of the things that's the major uh, and major need of an update is this uh, gauge cluster. Mitsubishi has been using this, I feel like, for 10 years, and it looks the same. I mean, all the font is very generic and kind of, uh, you know, mid-2000s, early 2010s. Mitsubishi needs to upgrade that for sure. Um, steering wheel also, to me, needs an upgrade. It looks much older than uh, it should. Um, all your buttons that you could ever want as well. Cruise control over here, phone, talking, all your modes for audio. Um, you know, nothing to really mention about that. There's not even grippers on the back. Look, I don't even know if you can see that, but there's no grippers for your hands, for your fingers. It's kind of just one big, solid, smooth piece of plastic. Uh, could be better for sure. Down here, you've got uh, traction control. You've got your forward collision mitigation, which again, every Mirage now has. Uh, mirrors as well. Nice uh, vents. And they actually feel really nice. So you do have four vents across the front, which is, uh, which is nice. Um, up top, the smallest light you've ever seen you know mirror there's no light there's no mirror on this one at all so that's kind of just a sun visor uh which you know and they don't extend either so like if the sun is right here guess what you ain't you're you're not getting that sun blocked unfortunately that's uh, just the way it is. The seats, let's talk about those real quick. Um, they're just as comfortable as the back. They're supportive and really, and they're obviously foamy um, underneath the uh, the cloth covering, um, but they feel really nice. They feel supportive. They're not highly bolstered or anything because this is not a sports car, obviously, um, but they feel nice. They're cushiony and supportive. No complaints there. Um, nothing really terribly exciting up front here. And the doors do have substantial uh, storage for you know napkins different options there are cup holders here and over there as well um, but there is uh, some nice storage ability if you need to do that um, let's talk about this again i forgot to mention you can upgrade this uh, sound system uh, to the rockford fosgate sound system which sounds much much better um, i'm having trouble finding one that actually has rockford fosgate because if you're buying an economy car you probably don't care about premium sound system um, this car has the base four speaker sound system which um, all the speakers are in the door so you know doesn't have the greatest sound in the world but um, it does the job all in all very simple interior not much to it it's very similar to the previous mirage uh, reviews that i've done uh, the one last thing i want to criticize is there's no armrest right here which you know and there's also no center console so like you, you have to like lean the whole way down to get any kind of support. There should be an armrest, a standard on these, or a higher center console armrest that you could, uh, you know, obviously rest your arm on for longer drives. Um, that being said, let's take this thing out for a drive and see how it performs. So out here on the road on this very sunny day in this 2021 Mirage, um, the first thing you notice is that it's a very small car. And I say that because um, everything around you is uh, making you feel like a dwarf. There actually is more initial, maybe for two seconds, some pep that you aren't expecting um, out of a three-cylinder non-turbocharged vehicle. Here's some braking. Quick brakes, again, ventilated brake discs in the front, drum brakes in the back, nice and gripping. There's only, you know, 2,100 pounds to stop. So the brakes actually feel really decent. But uh, one of the things you'll also notice too is that it's a loud kind of ride. There's not a ton of soundproofing or different, uh, you know, paddings in the doors to keep the sound out. And especially if you hit the gas, like I'm going to here in a few seconds, um, 
it's loud. I really wish they would kind of give uh, some thought into redesigning that, and I'm sure that is in the works, so stay tuned for future years. Uh, but I also wish there was a turbo engine option for this, a three-cylinder turbo. How fun would that be? Give it the little pep that it needs. Let's wait for the light. Here we go. I just floored it. In sport mode. It's floored. It's still floored. And we're only going 50. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even hit 60 miles an hour. Um, and you kind of heard how loud the engine was there. Um, yeah, so keep that in the back of your mind whenever you buy one of these things or rent one of these things or lease one of these things. Um, you know, speed is not the uh, Mirage's strong suit. Um, but there is uh, some other things that I want to talk about as far as the ride quality goes. Um, it's really nice and smooth over bumps and imperfections. Um, not large ones, but smaller ones that you would expect maybe a smaller car to be tossed around on. It, it actually does okay. Um, the steering, there's a little bit of oversteer I'm noticing. The wheel does kind of stay turned in the direction that you had it turned in. It doesn't like, you know, find itself back at center again, which is kind of odd. Um, you know, previous Mirage has also had that issue. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure why that is, but I wish the wheel didn't feel as, um, what's the word I want, loose as it does. Uh, but speaking of those brakes, there is electronic brake distribution on this Mirage, which is a nice touch, increases your stopping ability. Yeah, you really have to work the throttle to get the uh, acceleration that you need. What worries me about one of these things is, A, I like, to, I like to drive fast kind of anyway, but if you need to merge quickly or you're getting on an on-ramp or something for a high, fast highway, give yourself five extra seconds before you need the power to let this car build up to it because you're going to need it. Um, but just everyday city cruising and driving, this thing is perfect. It's great because it's small. It fits into small spaces. One of the things I love too, if I'm a rear passenger ever, I hate when the window stops with like this much window and glass still exposed. All of the windows on all of the doors here on this Mirage go completely into the door. They can completely disappear, so there's no little lip left, which is great. I love that they're completely uh, gone. You can lock the rear windows, though, uh, you know, for child safety reasons if you want to do that. So just cruising here, uh, the car is actually relatively nice. The seats are comfortable. Everything is within reach. Um, I do wish the uh, center touch screen was a little bit bigger. I feel like 7 is really small. Um, it might have been, you know, great five years ago. I think 8 should be the base. Uh, size um, and there should be an option for a larger touch screen. Uh, I would imagine in the coming years that Mitsubishi will do that, but right now that touch screen seems a little bit small. Um, there are also no blind spot monitoring uh, systems on this particular one. All right, let's go to some smaller back roads here and see how she does. Kind of braking quickly to take this corner. A little bit of body roll for sure. I wasn't going that fast and I definitely felt the car lean more than I expected it to. Uh, but again, there's some initial get up and go that's not uh, expected. Could be a little bit more smooth, uh, but it's not as, as rough of a ride as you would maybe expect uh, considering the lack of power and lack of padding and lack of everything else. It feels confident though. I mean, I gotta say, uh, for the power that it doesn't have, it feels confident uh, taking these uh, kind of country back roads um, I don't feel like I'm not in control. Let's talk warranty also. Every brand new Mitsubishi comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited uh, new car warranty, which gives you such peace of mind. So you're paying, you know, 17, 18,000 bucks for a brand new car, and you get protection for the next decade and 100,000 miles. That's pretty awesome, if you ask me. Um, I don't know how much of that you're actually going to use. I've seen tons of reviews on these things, and my own reviews, people who have these cars love them because they're so easy to take care of. They're so easy to maintain. They're just basic the way cars were once made, nothing crazy fancy. We've become so spoiled with massaging seats and heated steering wheels. Mitsubishi and the Mirage are like, nah, bro, we're gonna give you some four wheels, an engine, brakes, and a steering wheel, and you go at it. So I think that will do it for today's review of this 2021 Mirage G4. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you like about this car the most. Do you like the hatchback more? Do you like the sedan more? Again, this one is three inches uh, 
larger uh, rear legroom wise than the hatchback. Speaking of which, Platinum Mitsubishi in uh, Pennsylvania has tons of these things. They have hundreds of new Mitsubishis in stock. Check them out at the link below. Shout out to those guys again for letting me borrow this for the day and take it around town. Uh, please like this video if it was helpful for you and subscribe to the channel below. And I'm so happy with, uh, with all the support we've had so far. So please continue along here on Overdrive Reviews as this channel continues to grow. And please follow us also on Instagram at Overdrive Reviews. We're trying to grow our community here. Uh, I thank you all for watching. We'll see y'all next time.